Thank you for joining us for day 11 of the second installment of the Reset Your Life Conference. Oh, this has been an incredible journey that we've been on. The first installment of the Reset Experience was, was sponsored by the MISPA and the Germantown churches located in the city of Philadelphia. The evangelist, Pastor Orville Brissett, was just amazing and did such an outstanding job. And now this installment is sponsored by the East Lansdowne Church, also known as ELC, the West Church, located in the city of Philadelphia, and the World Harvest Outreach Church, whose pastor, Keith Goodman, has just been such an inspiration to us through this time, along with his wife, Evelyn, who has just been singing for us on, on some of our nights, and we just thank them for their support and their participation in this this, this this important effort. Folks, there are many people that have now made their decisions. The most important decisions they'll ever make in their life. Remember, reset means renew, enhance, strengthen, extend, and transform your life through Jesus Christ. And this has been a transformative experience. Our evangelist, Pastor Nick Telefero, has bought a word that has been so clear and so easy to understand in just our language and meeting us where we are that we have just been moved. People have made decisions for baptism. People have made decisions to seek studies. And it's not too late for you to do the same. Can't let this opportunity slip by. You cannot let this opportunity go by without making a decision. Folks, we've got a special program for you tonight, which our evangelist is going to introduce. But now is the time. There's only three, three nights left, including tonight. It's just three nights left. Our final program will be an early afternoon service on Saturday. Right now, you need to make your choice. You need to make your decision. Time is running out, and we don't want you to be left behind. So folks, get ready. Keep an open heart. Keep an open mind. Our Father, just be with us as we go through this reset experience. Please just be with us. Filter out any distortions that we might experience through these lines or, or internet services that are faulty. And whatever we are, whatever we're doing, let us hear this message the way you intend for us to hear. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. So folks, whether you're on your phone, your laptop, your tablet, your computer, whatever device you're using, get ready. Keep an open heart, keep an open mind. We've got a special service for you tonight. As I usually say, we've got good music for you tonight. We've got a good word for you tonight. We've got a good message for you tonight, and we have a special service for you tonight, and the reset continues now.
Good evening to you, and thank you for joining us again for the Reset Your Life Evangelistic Conference. And normally, when you see me, it's time for me to begin to share with you a scripture and to give the message for the evening. But tonight is a special night that I've been looking forward to for at least a week now, and that this is our night for our special anointing and prayer for healing and deliverance. I'm so grateful that so many people have taken seriously the, the opportunity to come before a God who says, I open a door that no man can shut, a God who makes the promise that he can do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or all that we think. And tonight we want to lean heavily on the arm of the Lord and ask him to move in ways that human beings cannot. We come before God as humbly as we know how, seeking his grace. And later on, I'm going to preach a sermon about what it takes to be the recipient and to be qualified for the miracles of God, to get healing from God. But for right now, men and women have come with all the faith that they have, asking that we would set their names and their cases before God. And in a few moments, we will have the opportunity to pray together. And wherever you are, we ask that you would either raise your hands, whatever position of prayer allows you to feel closest to God, assume that posture. And we're going to have three men of God to, to lift their voices on behalf of all of the people who come for this special season of prayer and anointing. We believe that God is going to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think. This is not a form or fashion. We wait now upon Almighty God to move in ways that will allow us to praise him just a little bit higher. Another level, Lord, another level. Answer our needs by taking us to another level. Let me share with you some of the request, and then I bring before you Pastor Sean Fordham of the ELC Church, East Lansdowne Church, Pastor Ron Williams, who is our area coordinator. He's been behind the scenes, but with us the entire time, and uh, Pastor Keith Goodman cannot be with us because he's in Houston, and right now they are preparing to meet the fury of the storm. We pray for them, and so in his absence, we remember him. But last but not least, of course, is the man who started it all for us during this Reset Conference, Pastor Orville Brissett of the Germantown Church. They will be coming before you to offer prayers and to prepare our hearts for this season of intercession. But first, here are a few names that you should keep in mind as we pray. We remember Devin, Devin Roberts, and we ask that he would have total transformation of mind, body, and spirit and readiness for the second coming. There's someone asking for prayer for their son, Danielle Campbell. We remember Danielle tonight. For Carol Lang, we remember Leroy Mulholland and Lester Lang, that God would grant them the healing that they seek. My good friend, Ernie Davidson, and his daughter, Shannon, who are wrestling with a health condition, that God can move because we've seen it happen. We would ask that God would intercede in their lives and that he would lift up those daughters that are any that, that I know that you love so dearly. From Sister Marcia Roberts, she's asking for prayer for Martel. He was attacked by men wielding weapons and is now critical in intensive care. For our good friend, Sister Kathy Wilson, who has already given a praise report, she's driving for the first time in quite a while. Sister, Sister O'Connor has a prayer request for her family that all of her children would be taught of the Lord and would turn completely to the Lord and be committed to God and walk more closely with him. Lorraine Lewis asks for physical and spiritual healing, and she also expresses appreciation for all that's going on with the Reset Conference. Sister Frances would like God's healing power for acid reflux and glaucoma. We're saying specific things because we want a specific thing done. Sister Walcott's prayer is for total body healing, a closer walk with God. Prayer for her grandchildren, especially for Christopher, who's trying his best to find the strength to cope. The daughter of one of our colleagues who has been wrestling with a very fierce adversary of addiction. Even though I've never met this young lady, every time I think of her, it lays on my heart as though she were my own child. And so, my friend, we're praying for your daughter, that God would give her complete victory and return her whole to you. 
Sister Margaret is Sister Margaret is asking for prayers for healing of her medical condition and for guidance for her two granddaughters who went back to school. And we know that going to school today is more than simply having the risk of passing tests. Brother Miguel Campbell's prayer request is for his son Clifton Campbell, his daughter Carmen Campbell, and for Brother Newton Johnson and for himself. Daniel Smith is wrestling with issues of the mind, and we would ask that God would bless him. Miguel Boney is diagnosed with dementia at the age of 51, and Ira has suffered a brain injury and needs constant care for his protection and his well-being. Zahara is wrestling with mood and issues of behavior. Erica has arthritis and is struggling to regain her mobility. LJ needs a job and a home. Carl has issues with health and with memory. Joshua and Philip are in the battle against addiction, that scourge that has beset so many. Then there's the prayer request for Brother Dean, who has cancer. Deliverance for Ermine Campbell, spiritual strength and growth for a certain someone and for Abby, that they'll all stay connected to the source of life, Jesus Christ. And this is from Sister Rabotham. Javon Taylor is standing in need of prayer. He's 17 years old from Kingston College, but he's diagnosed with a disease and needs a liver transplant at the age of 17. Aunt Gertie is asking for prayer request and an unspoken request for Sister Ethelyn Watson and for the other sister as well. Special prayer for the home circle and that all would be guided by the Spirit of God and that we would be in good health. And for special anointing over the family and extended family of Sister Lindsay, that they might be an example to family members and for all who stand in need of prayer now. Open your heart to the God who says that if you come to me, I will in no wise cast you out. And now I call upon my colleagues, Pastor Sean Fordham, Pastor Ron Williams, and Pastor Orville Brissett, to lead us now in a litany of intercession as we seek the power of Almighty God. Let's look to God as we pray. Second Chronicles. Chapter 7, verse 14, and it reads, If my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and will pray and seek my face and turn away from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven. I will forgive them of their sins and I will heal, heal, heal their land. Isaiah chapter 57 verses 18 and 19 says, I have seen their ways, but I will heal them. I will guide them and restore comfort to Israel's mourners, creating praise on their lips. Peace, peace to those far and near, says the Lord, and I will heal them. Psalms 41 and verse 3 says in the New Living Translation, The Lord nurses them when they are sick and restores them to health. Father, we ask you to just be with us. We ask your spirit be in this 
your God that you promised us that you came to heal our bodies and heal the brokenhearted and save our souls. And we ask for all of that today. For you have decreed and declared, O oh God, that you would nurse, tend to, draw near those who are suffering, afflicted, and infirm. And God, you would not only draw near, but the Bible declares that you will restore. And so tonight we plead the blood of Jesus and thank you for the healing power of God. We call upon your name this evening for healing for our communities. Our communities are filled with social unrest because of the enemy's desire to sow division. As we reach our hands out towards whatever device we are looking at this program on or listening to, we ask that your will be done. Have your way. Into your hands we commit these bodies and these minds. Lord, our hearts are yours. There is truly a balm in Gilead for the sin-sick soul. And so, God, we give you glory for the restoration, for the power, for the provision, for the bringing of life to that which might have been on death's road. We're thankful, God, for you restoring and bringing healing to the well-being of your people. So, God, we pray for healing and wholeness, restoration, and joy. In Jesus' name I pray. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. In Jesus' name. In that name that is above all names, we humbly ask, amen and amen. to worry about what others may say or do. I've got heaven in my view.
Well, welcome back to you, and I'm, I'm hoping that you were spiritually refreshed by that season of prayer as I was, but even more so, the music that was rendered, uh, uh, both musics today. We had two special selections for you today. Brandy Sutton is a world-class operatic soprano whose voice is an instrument that is peerless, and we thank you, Brandy, for lending your talent to the Reset Your Life Conference. And our good sister and friend, Sister Evelyn Fordham Goodman, presents a song and frames a song in a way that you can feel it and own it and take it with you. Evelyn, thank you so much for sharing your gift with us as well. I want to invite those of you who are making your journey to walk closer with God, to reach out so that we can assist you in that journey. We have to be accountable to you. We're inviting you to follow God through Christ and you may have questions, you may need prayer for some things, you may have issues that, that you could use some assistance with. Uh, there's a number right here beneath me, 215-222-5707, 215-222-5707. Call that number if we can assist you in your journey. If you're making a decision for God, let us know about it so that we can pray with you and for you. If you want to study further, let us know about that. Just call that number, and we will respond to you pretty quickly. It's not a hotline, but it's a warm line. We'll get back to you. Tomorrow, I'll have some other locations, online locations, that you can connect with so that we can assist you as you become a disciple. You're not, you're not here just to become a fan. You're not an admirer of God. We're inviting you to full discipleship, and that is what we're asking you to respond to. I won't be long tonight. I know I say that all the time, but this time I actually mean it, and I know I say that all the time, too. But since we've had prayer and we've had two songs, the, the evening is pretty well spent. But I want to just say a few words about the qualifications for healing by looking into the life of a sad man to see what it takes to really be healed by God, what will allow you to believe that God will do something special for you. The book we are using is the Gospel of Mark, the 10th chapter, verse 46, through and including verse 51, and it says, And they come to Jericho, and Jesus went out from Jericho with his disciples and a great multitude. The son of Timaeus, Bartimaeus, a blind beggar, was sitting by the wayside. And when he heard that it was Jesus the Nazarene, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And many rebuked him, that he should hold his peace. But he cried out the more a great deal, Thou son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stood still and said, Call ye him. And they called the blind man, saying unto him, Be of good cheer, rise, he calleth thee. And the blind man, casting away his garment, sprang up and came to Jesus. And Jesus answered him, and said, What wilt thou that I should do for you? And the blind man said unto Jesus, Master, I want to see. The qualifications for healing. Pray with me. Open our eyes so that we might see glimpses of you of glory. Savior divine, we ask. Amen and amen. Jesus comes out of the palm city of Jericho and there on the side of the road watching the glad parade of life go by as it were with the eyes of his soul is a man who stands in need of all sorts of things. He needs a miracle but what qualifies him for one? What, what right does he have to believe that he can expect anything from God? And 
I'm not the only one thinking that way. Notice what the text says, that when he called out to Christ, they rebuked him. The people said, you, you have no right to expect anything from God. When it comes to expectations from God, when it comes to people needing miracles and healings and deliverances, there are many people who will tell you what you have to do so that you can have the right to expect God to do what you ask. I know people who will say, well, one of the things you need to do is fast and pray, but I don't see Bartimaeus fasting or praying. And There are others who will say that you got to live right. If you want God to respond to you, you got to you got to live right. I, I see no evidence or no validation or uh, nothing that recommends this man's quality of life to me. There's nothing about him that appears to suggest that he is of superior moral character or quality. And then there are those who say well, you have to be faithful in your, in your stewardship. You've got to return an honest tithe and an offering. I, the only thing I see this man doing is begging for things, not trying to give them away. In fact, when we look at this man's life, what we see is not what qualifies him, but we become very clear of a list of things that might be considered uh, disqualifiers. First of all, we, we see that he is sightless. And in, that day, in the day when these words were penned, to be sightless was to be almost a sentence of doom. They, they did not have Braille. You, you could not read. There were no special ed classes for people who could not see, that uh, there were no laws that said that people who had a sight impediment had to be given the opportunities for access and egress as sighted people have. You were on your own completely. Uh, they, they didn't have doctors who were good with, with eyesight treatments. So he is sightless. And then he is nameless. Uh, by nameless, I mean he has nothing upon which to build as far as his own reputation. But you say, wait a minute. The Bible clearly says his name was Bartimaeus, but the truth of the matter is, is that is not his name. The word Bartimaeus is a compound word that suggests that his father was an important person. The word bar, B-A-R, means son of. And Timaeus is the name uh, that his father wielded. The name Timaeus means honorable, worthy, laudable. It appears to be suggesting that this Bartimaeus character, whose name we do not really know, had a father who was someone worthy of note. Uh, people would refer to him by the fact, you know, that's Timaeus's boy, but they forgot his name because he didn't do anything. He didn't have anything. He wasn't worth anything. It's horrible when you have a legacy and you can't live up to it. You you can't measure up to what your legacy is. You, 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 your daddy was somebody important, but who are you? I think back for all of my African-American brothers that I see sometimes in prison or on the street living beneath their legacy, how sad it is to watch someone or something live beneath the legacy that it rightly deserves. I, I think of the King Mansa Munsa, who was the potentate of Timbuktu and the great institution of learning that was there. Now we have young men who won't even go to school when it's for free. I think of our young ladies, and I, I'm drawn to a certain song that is playing in the charts, and I'm not going to beat up on people because of what they sing, but I listen to these young ladies sing these songs, and the only thing they seem to have going for them is uh, the aggrandizing of their own lust and the marketing of their own bodies. When they descend from queens like Candace of Ethiopia and Hatshepsut of Egypt and, and Sheba's Makeda, who astounded King Solomon, uh, we have a legacy, but we, we live beneath it. It is sad to watch this. And so we've got this man. He, he doesn't have sight. He is sightless. He is nameless. Uh, he is jobless. He, he has no job. You know, there's nothing that he can do. There's there's no handicapped skills center that allows him to make use of other things that can be really useful. He is worthless when it comes to economy. He has a battered cup and he waits for coins to fall in them. And he is hapless. Hapless because he's sitting by the side of the road. And he is begging. He sits and he begs. He, he, doesn't, he doesn't even make progress while begging. He sits. And he begs. It's, 
He's making no progress in life. When people become hapless, they, they become content to die where they stand, or even worse, where they sit. They're hapless. He sits and he begs. The beggar is one of the least fortunate individuals in our society because beggars lose the ability to specify their own direction in life. They become the recipients of, of the cast-offs and the rejections of others. They, they, they don't have any longer a compass that points them to their own dreams and desires. They simply become waiting upon the lack of uh, or the presence of some kindness of others. You see them at street corners with a sign up and uh, they just want anything that you have. What, what do you call a person who will settle for anything? Well, this is Vartimaeus. This is this man. He is sad, but he needs... He needs a miracle from God, but what recommends him? He is, he is sightless, he is nameless, he is jobless, he is hapless, but he is not hopeless. Because on this day, his life is going to change. God comes by. And here's the good news, my friend. I am discovering that God is drawn to people who are sightless and nameless, people who are jobless and hapless, people who venture near the edge of hopelessness, people who are disenfranchised and left to their own devices, people who receive the, uh, the nodding, wagging heads and fingers of society, people who appear to have no sense of direction. God is drawn to those kind of people because the Bible says when, when this man realizes that Jesus is passing by and calls out to him, everybody else tells him to be quiet. But the Bible says that Jesus stopped and turned in the attempt to the direction of the man. You know, there's something about God that allows him to hear the faintest cry. When everybody else turns away, there's a God who, who hears the weakest of voices and the least deserving of individuals. There's something about God that suggests that the qualification for deliverance and healing is the fact that you have nothing else the more hopeless you appear, the more God seems to be in your favor. You know, the thing that qualifies you for a miracle from God, the thing that qualifies you for healing, the thing that qualifies you for deliverance is the fact that you have nowhere else to go. The disqualifications of this world are the qualifications for God. When everybody else tells him to shut up, Jesus tells him to get up. When people push you out, Jesus says, I will take you in. I don't want to take a long time, but, but I want to spend just a moment to talk about the fact that God is drawn to tough cases. Because there's somebody in front of me right now listening to me, somewhere out there where I can't see you or touch you, but God knows who you are and where you are. There's somebody out there right now who believes that their case is beyond the pale of recognition and assistance. But I'm here to tell you that you are the kind of people, you are the kind of person that God is looking for. When Hagar got lost in the wilderness trying to find her way back home with her young child and she didn't have enough to survive in the wilderness, and she thought that she was about to die. God became her way out of nowhere because God is drawn to hapless cases. When Jacob messed up his life by running schemes and games that got him in trouble and he had to leave home and for the first time he found himself without the tender ties of family to support and secure him. And in the midst of the wilderness, underneath a brazen sky, feeling that he had no hope, God reached down to him and became his ladder out of his pit of despair because God is drawn to the hapless. When Moses found himself leading a bunch of recalcitrant, stubborn, stiff-necked people who complained at every turn and he faced the Red Sea speaking of death and the Egyptian army bloodthirsty and ravaging and he looked to God and said, what do I do now? God opened a corridor through the Red Sea because God becomes the bridge over troubled waters for those who are hapless and almost helpless. 
When the Hebrew boys found themselves the victims of their own integrity, God became the fire escape. When Daniel was tricked and trapped by those who did not have the honor that he had, God became his beast master. I'm telling you right now that God is drawn to people who are desperate. You want to know what you need to receive a miracle from God? You've got to be desperate. You've got to come to God like this man who realized that this was his chance. Jesus is passing by. The people tell him, you need to be quiet. We've got decorum that we've got to measure up to. There are ways that we do things around here. And you don't seem to understand that you are outside of the realm and the envelope of decent decorum and, and behavior. But he cried out the more because when you're desperate, God, God, God's attention is drawn toward you. When it's desperate. I believe right now that God still can hear those who are on the wayside, those who are disenfranchised, those who find themselves outside of the mainstream, that God still cranes his ear to listen to those who are on the side of the road. I believe that if you call him, that he'll still hear you, that, 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 that he'll hear the faintest cry of those who have been turned away by others who feel that they're more important, that God still can hear. If you are determined, you see, that is your qualification for the miracle. I am determined to get God's attention. God can still hear you. You can call him. I wish somebody had the temerity to call upon him. Just call out to him. You know, just, just, just say his name. He, 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 is, he is Ezekiel's wheel in the middle of the wheel. Just call out to him. He's Jonah's redirection course. Call out to him. Bartimaeus called him. But what I like most as a qualification for healing is when Jesus has Bartimaeus in front of him, he asks him the question. He says, what do you want me to do for you? When people have been hapless and they've lost direction and they, they've been shuttled to the side and disenfranchised, they lose the ability to articulate their own dreams. They, most beggars just say, whatever you, whatever you can, just help a brother out or help a sister out or whatever you can do. But when you come before God, it is time to search the labyrinth of your desires. It's time for you to plow through the caverns of expectation that have been long dormant in the back of your mind. God says, what do you want me to do? You can not only be determined with God, you need to be decisive. Bartimaeus didn't hesitate. He said, Lord, I want to see. I want my sight back. Let me see. It's time for you to become decisive with God. It's, it's time for you to tell God what you really need and want in life. It's time for you to dare yourself to dream again and to say, these are the things that I want to do. It is time for you to stop looking for crumbs from the table and recognize that healing is the bread of the children and that as a child of God, you have the right to sit there and say, Lord, this is what I require of you. I want my sight back. I want my job back. I want my family back. I want my health back. I want my dreams back. But get decisive with God. In your desperation, come before God and with both hands extended and say, Lord, this is what I need. Because when you're decisive with God, he can respond decisively with you. That man went away seeing that day because he had the qualifications for healing. He was desperate and he was decisive. How about you? Are you some weak namby-pamby saint who, who says, oh, I just hope one day things get better? Are you, are you willing to raise your voice by the side of the road and, and get a little undignified and Call out to the master and say, you know, Lord, I need this from you. Son of David, hear me. Can you articulate the, the desires of your heart? God says, I will give you the desires of your heart. If you don't know what you want, how can God satisfy you? Reach out to him in desperation and with definition and call out on him tonight. Some of you are making decisions to follow him. You see, Following God means you've got to be decisive. He, you know, those who come to God must believe that he is. Uh, an unstable man cannot follow God or anything. 
And if you need help in your walk with God, again, I leave with you this number, 215-222-5707. It's right there on the screen. Call and say, pastors, I need help with my walk. I, I want to follow God, but I'm having some issues. We will help you. And now, may the Lord bless you. And may the Lord keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord raise his countenance up upon you and give you everlasting peace. We're keeping an eye now on those things that we prayed about earlier. And I'll see you again tomorrow as the Reset Your Life Conference continues in its final week. God bless you. 